Okay, good evening, council members. I'm Mick Renison, deputy mayor. It's my pleasure to present the Office of the Mayor's Budget for your consideration this evening. The mayor's office's most important function is providing strategic direction for our 17 departments. That 17 means if you approve the new engineering department, which you'll hear about on Thursday night. We have 850 employees, and we're very thoughtful and careful stewards, we hope, of the $166 million entrusted to us by our residents and our visitors. The mayor's office consists of eight full-time employees and up to four additional interns. Key functions of our office include providing strategic direction for the city as an organization, communicating and engaging with the public on matters important to the community, and creating a culture of innovation to improve the efficiency of service delivery to our residents and visitors. Some of the high-level goals of our organization are listed here. You'll hear more detail about these high-level goals throughout our department's presentations this week. I do want to point out that the graphic on this slide and many of the additional graphics used at all city facilities and on social media, particularly during the pandemic, were created by Andrew Krebs, the digital communication spe specialist in the mayor's office. Andrew's also been responsible for assisting Stephen Lucas with the technical coordination of Zoom and Facebook Live meetings for the council and other boards and commissions during the pandemic. Moving to some updates on our 2020 goals, uh, we typically would have department head meetings once a month that was prior to COVID. Due to COVID, we've increased the frequency of our department head meetings to once a week. During these meetings, we plan for the budget process and we address the delivery of services during the pandemic. And those are unusual, that being the pandemic planning has certainly added to the reason we've had to have more frequent department head meetings. In addition, the mayor created a continuity of city government team in early March. This group of department heads led by myself and HR director Caroline Shaw also includes the city clerk and the council member Dave Rollo. That group's been meeting regularly to reconfigure the provision of city services during the pandemic while protecting our employees and the public. This has been a particularly time consuming and very important function of our administration since mid-March. One of our major initiatives and has been for several years and will continue to be for the, the foreseeable future is the hospital reuse project. With the assistance of the hospital reuse committee co-chaired by Senator Vice Simpson and Mayor Hamilton with committee involvement by members of the city council, we selected an owner's representative, Browning Development, to assist us with, hospital, with the hospital project. We also contracted with the master planning firm, Skidmore, Owings & Merrill, in early 2020. These two entities will provide critical planning for and assisting the city with the future development of the project. As recently as August 6th, we held the second of four online public forums. These forums have been heavily attended with 200 participants in the first forum and more than 100 in the second. The third forum will be conducted in October. One goal that has currently been suspended and was just asked about during the controller's presentation is the Convention Center expansion project. While that project is on hold, $2 million in funds collected from the food and beverage tax have been repurposed to help local businesses recover the impacts of COVID-related limitations. Communication outreach has been particularly crucial during the pandemic and has increased significantly as a result. Our communication staff, Director Yael Cassander and the aforementioned Andrew Krebs produce press releases, website and social media updates, news conferences and Facebook live sessions to provide the public with timely information on city initiatives. As of July 31st of this year, they've written and distributed 93 press releases in addition to the 121 department generated press releases. They've also written, produced and distributed 99 speeches, remarks and videos by Mayor, ha Mayor Hamilton, most of which are now on the city's website. And if you aren't aware of these, I think you all get them. Uh, the mayor is at least three times a week communicating via uh, these, these now um, uh, YouTube videos, messages to both our employees and the public uh, during the COVID pandemic. We also seek public input in a number of different ways, including our website, calls and emails to our office and all city offices, and by attending meetings and community events. Public engagement is led by Mary Catherine Carmichael. Mary Catherine attends board and commission meetings and other community functions to hear from 
and share information with residents, businesses, and not-for-profits. Particularly important this year has been our engagement with Indiana University, IU Health, and the county as we all respond to managing the impact of COVID on our community. With the return of IU students at this time of year, Mary Catherine has been exceptionally active, along with Mayor Hamilton and others, in this important outreach in preparation for the return of half the population of our community. I'd note that in this year of COVID and racial tension, our front office staff, Elizabeth Carone, Celeste Wolfinger, and interns Jordan Kipp and Paul Stalkey, have had to in answer an incredible number of calls from ang angry and emotional people. They do this professionally and courteously every day. You'd be surprised to know the nature of some of the calls that our office receives. I want to thank and acknowledge them for exhibiting such grace under pressure. Finally, our innovation director, Dave Takid, looks for ways to make city processes more navigable for the public, in addition to exploring options for improving city operations. Dave Ta was successful in securing a Bloomberg Innovation Training Grant that has involved 10 departments that are being trained on process improvement. Our first, process, our first project using this process is analyzing and improving our leafing program. Moving to goals for 2021. One of the most important goals of our administration will be the continued master planning of the Bloomington Hospital site. As we all know, IU Health plans on moving to their new location during the fourth quarter of 2021. That will initiate the demolition phase of their current site. While that process will likely take most of 2022 to complete, it will be essential for our master plan to be ready to guide the future redevelopment of the current site. It's quite possible that some parts of the 24 acres that the city is acquiring might be ready for development prior to the completion of the demolition. That makes master plan readiness even more important to accelerate the positive benefits of redeveloping this area for our community's future. Along with the normal production of press releases and speeches, our social media presence has increased dramatically in 2020. From January through August 15th, our social media audience has grown by 12% engagement by 127% and video views by 350% or 148,000 views over fiscal year 2019. Our comments volume has increased by 182% for a total of 6,200 and messages increased by 464% for a total of 2,940 for the same period above. Based on those metrics, our two social media goals for 2021 will assist us in being responsive to our community's feedback via our social media platforms. One of the more impactful ways we hear from our community is the every other year community survey, which we've conducted in 2017 and 2019, and will again in quarter one of 2021. This statistically valid survey, randomly sent to thousands of households in our community, provides our administration with information that guides the deployment of resources and informs us of resident concerns with the delivery of city services. Moving to innovation, we're just now beginning to use what we've learned from our Bloomberg training initiative to reform our leafing program. One of the impacts of COVID was the suspension of this initiative from March through August of this year. Now that it's resumed, we'll complete the full nine month training cohort and use newly learned skills to tackle community challenges. We'll be undertaking a modified version of the leafing program in late 2020 and early 2021 in the form of a pilot program with two neighborhoods that have volunteered. We anticipate more significant changes following in 2021 after assessing that pilot program. Our innovation director will also be working with our public engagement and communications team and all our departments to create public facing dashboards that will provide the administration and our community with updates on administrative goals in a more user friendly format. So here are some highlights of the Office of the Mayor's General Fund budget. Our total request is a little over 984,000, an overall increase of 2%. In category one, which is the bulk of our budget request, that request is about 872,000. Uh, most of that's the 2% increase in wages that, that non-union employees will receive, as well as the final equalization adjustment of the salary study. In category two supplies, it's just a small increase of $253 related to additional supplies we've needed for remote work and we think we'll need continuing into 2021. In category three, it's actually a decrease from um, to $109,000. Most of that's in the travel lines. Some of those conference 
fees that we had spent this year will be credited for next year's travel. And in line 399, which we have reached set aside funding for a public engagement platform that we believe now we can get at a lesser cost uh, than we originally thought was possible. And we have no capital outlays request in the mayor's office budget. Here's the summary of that budget showing uh, 2021's request and prior year expenditures. With that, our request is before you and you can see the major initiatives of our office and I'd be happy to answer any questions that you might have. Thank you, Mr. Renison.